Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have be having a look at what's going to be happening after the heat wave we have going on at the moment. For obvious reasons we have been concentrating on the extreme heat that we've had over the past few days and those temperatures are going to rise even higher through Sunday into Tuesday potentially threatening our all time temperature record with those temperatures peaking in the mid to high 30s through Monday and Tuesday. But one thing we haven't concentrated on and I don't think many people have been thinking about but what is the fallout from this what is the going to be happening afterwards what's happening wednesday to friday um but we are getting to that sort of time frame where we are going to have to start considering it this heat is going to break down and we have to find out how severe that breakdown will be whether it's sort of a a sweep away of this with a bit of cloud, a bit of rain, or whether we see quite a violent thundery breakdown within this. And we'll have a look at what the latest models are showing at the moment. Now, we are still a good few days away, so we haven't got all the short resolution, uh, short range and high resolution models on this yet. But we'll have a look at the medium range models, see what they are showing in terms of precipitation for the end of this heat wave. As with this heat wave breaking down, we actually do have an area of low pressure running into this hot air. So it is highly likely we do see rain. Does look likely it will be heavy. And there is a chance, I mean, pretty moderate chance, I must say, because of the energy in the atmosphere, we do see thunderstorms, which could be severe for some. Just to remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, of course, we've got our extreme heat warnings in force through Sunday into Tuesday. Very, very high temperatures, mid to high 30s. Um, and, and as I said, if you uh, want to see more on that, make sure you check out the videos from the last few days where we have concentrated on this quite a lot. But I know a lot of you watching will be very much looking forward to the end of this hotter weather, what's going to be happening afterwards. And that's why in this video we're going to be focusing completely on what's happening the days following in terms of precipitation and uh, in terms of temperatures as well. So yeah, we've got extreme heat warnings in force. So these areas can be seeing severe temperatures, mid to high 30s quite likely through many areas, especially on Monday and Tuesday. Sunday looks more like low 30s, high 20s for quite a few. And, and yeah, severe conditions. But it's Tuesday evening into Wednesday. That's the current time frame where we're seeing a breakdown in these upper air temperatures. So as I say, if you want to Check out this, uh, what's happening with this heat. If you want to see the latest on that, check out my videos from the last couple of days or tomorrow I'll have another video looking at the heat um, just before it arrives. So if we do first have a look at the GFS run, see what that is showing over the next sort of couple of weeks. But we'll skip ahead all the way until uh, sort of post the heat wave. So if we do have a look, um, you can see this is at Tuesday, early hours of Tuesday. And you can see we've got a southerly wind. We have a look at the air mass, which you might as well zoom into the United Kingdom look as well. You can see incredibly hot air mass moving up from the south. 20 to 25 degrees at 850 HPA. Again, it's not pinpointed at this stage, but a very incredibly hot air mass moving in for Tuesday. However, if we do, uh, actually we put on the three hour intervals. We'll be able to see this in a bit more detail. You'll be able to see we've got much cooler air just to our southwest. And what that means is a temperature contrast. It is associated with an area of low pressure. If we do put the pressure charts on, you can see again a low pressure uh, system there. And along this boundary, there's going to be weather fronts, there's going to be energy, there's going to be precipitation. And what that precipitation is going to entail, that is the uncertainty. But by 3 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon, now remember this timeline can change by between 6 and 12 hours. That's sort of the time frame we're looking at, so around 5 days. This can change by a few days, so by a few hours. But at this stage, what the models are currently thinking is Tuesday afternoon is going to be incredibly hot still, especially through central and eastern areas, still with that incredibly hot air mass. And it's Tuesday evening where we're going to be seeing a breakdown. So you can see much cooler conditions, around 10 to 15 degrees cooler in the upper air temperatures down across the southwest sweeps in through Tuesday evening 
and you can see that hot air wrapping around there will be a weather front here and towards the center of this low pressure there will be intense rain there'll be a lot of energy most likely intense thunderstorms so we'll have a look at those warp precipitation charts in a minute but you see it sweeps through and we do go much cooler with more of a westerly flow now you can see the upper air temperatures are not that cold at this stage especially in the south still pretty warm so we could still see toasty temperatures on wednesday mid to high 20s and again if we have a look at those two meter temperatures um around 6 p.m you see mid to high 20s is highly possible in the south but as we head into thursday you see it start to reduce a bit perhaps still mid 20s in the south maybe 27 28 we still hang on to some residual heat but you can generally see in the longer term we haven't got anything remotely too warm for the immediate sort of two to three days after you can't say anything too much day 10 beyond just simply because there is a lot of uncertainty with this so you can see there is a breakdown coming you see the low pressure is sweeping this hot air away very very quickly and to be honest this low pressure system that is sweeping it away is the one bringing the hot air on its eastern side anyway so um yeah it's going to be sweeping through and it's most likely going to be introducing a lot of instability combined with the very hot air we could see some heavy rain and thundery weather. Now, if we see what the GM compares to that, uh, again, if we do go to the um, three-hour intervals, uh, actually, if we go to the entry of the HPA temperature, go to the three-hour intervals, and go have a look at the United Kingdom look, you can see the incredibly hot air mass through early hours of Tuesday. It continues, and then around Tuesday afternoon to the evening, you can see it being swept away, a lot more hot air holding on further westwards through Tuesday afternoon, and again, if you have a look at those two meter temperatures, mid to high 30s, threatening our all-time temperature record, but you can see the far southwest, low 20s, and it's along that boundary where we're going to be seeing heavy precipitation and likely thundery weather so low pressure sweeps through and again you see this hot air wrapping around the low again that's going to be feeding the low pressure system it'll be giving it more energy more uh cape values with that which we'll have a look at in a minute especially with the gfs uh and then it will produce rain and thundery weather again we're not gonna be able to pinpoint it at this stage but we're just going to be showing all the different scenarios that we're seeing so you can see at moving through and then we go Again, uh, into more of a westerly flow, still got relatively warm air masses towards the south. So as I said, for sort of Thursday time, still likely to be seeing sort of mid to high 20s, but nothing, at all, nowhere near as oppressive. And if we do see heavy precipitation come through, it will cool that air down quite a bit more. So yes, it will feel still warm, but more pleasantly warm, that more pleasant heat through Wednesday to Friday in the south, further northwards through the Midlands, much cooler back towards sort of average conditions. So if you're looking forward to some cooler weather, definitely does look likely from Wednesday to Friday next week, it will be turning cooler. The south, though, may still hang on to some warmth and some heat, but nowhere near as hot as the days preceding it. And of course, there is likely to be precipitation through Tuesday evening into Wednesday as well with those showers and thundery weather and as i said if we look back on the angry feature temperatures you can see just continuing after that we just continue with the westerly flow low pressure to our north higher pressure to our south so always the chance of warmer air hanging on the far southeast giving warm hot days getting towards the high 20s maybe 30 degrees but further north and westwards more precipitation and cloud now if we do have a look at what is showing on the latest gfs um so if we do run through you can see this is getting towards Monday evening. You can see some Cape across Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland. Again, Cape is just a measure of energy that is available to the uh, to any uh, convective updrafts or any thundery weather, any showers that are just taking off. This is the energy. So you can see through Monday evening there could be some isolated heavy showers across Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland, maybe parts of Wales as well. But the big Cape does arrive through Tuesday. Now, because we are still quite far out, we only have six hour intervals here, so this will be changing, it won't be changing as drastic as this, but you see by 2pm on, uh, on Tuesday, some heavy, uh, or some quite uh, heavy showers could be breaking out, isolated though, across northern Wales, parts of northern England, into Scotland, but it's through Tuesday evening, you can see a more, uh, a large area of significant cape, we could be seeing... Uh, with this scenario, an area of heavy, thundery rain through England and Wales, 
and then ahead of it where we still hang on to that very hot air across Scotland with the instability you can see the big Cape Valleys there could be some big thunderstorms again we're just looking at the scenarios it's not what's going to exactly happen but this is what the GFS is looking at at the moment and as we head towards the early hours of when, uh, Wednesday you see that Cape does diminish as the low pressure moves through now if we do have a look at the raw precipitation from this um Again, it's going to be slightly inaccurate uh, at this lead time, but as we head through um, through Tuesday, you can see heavy precipitation heading up from the southwest and turning more showery and heavy. You can see some of these heavier pulses within that heavy, thundery rain moving around that. You can see it's not organised as such. It's going to be a lot of bands and little small areas of heavy, thundery precipitation swinging up from the southwest, rotating around the low pressure for clearing into the North Sea for all Wednesday. And you can see it becomes a little bit more organised. You can see a centre of the low there, weather front around it. That could be through Wednesday afternoon into the evening through northeastern England and eastern Scotland. Could see more organised rain there as the low pressure forms a little bit more. So, yeah, looking very interesting there. We can't say exactly whether we're going to be seeing, seeing significant thunderstorms, but there's a lot of precipitation around and there's high level of cape in some areas. So if you put those two together, there is the recipe there. There are the ingredients for some thundery weather. Now, if we do have a look at what the GEM is showing, uh, again, looking at the raw precipitation. As we head through Tuesday evening, you see showers spreading up from the southwest, turning heavy and thundery, potentially through northern England and Scotland. So that's where we saw the increased Cape values on the GFS run. Again, not as much precipitation further southwards, but still showers sweeping through. Again, with this lead time, you're not expecting it to be 100% accurate, but you can see there are heavy, thundery showers associated with this spinning around the low for clearing out into the North Sea and turning much drier beyond that before weather front starting to approach from the north and the west. And as I said, still would be pretty warm in the south, but not quite as oppressively hot. And of course, if we did see, as I said, see some thundery weather, some heavy rain, it will cool those air conditions air, or air temperatures down significantly through Tuesday evening, where it's mid to high 30s, it could be low 20s um, in, in just a, sort of six hours or so. Massive temperature drop if we did see some very heavy precipitation. Now, if we do just have a look at the UK Met Office run, the global run. Now, we can't fully see this as it's right at the end of this run, but as we head through to Tuesday evening, you can see heavy thundery rain heading up from the south. Again, slightly more delayed than the other runs are showing. You look at those max temperatures, still incredibly hot at midnight, at midnight across central areas, and you can see during the day, mid to high 30s. So it's highly likely the UK Met Office run, the global run here, is slightly more delayed. Uh, but you can see at right at the end of the run, at midnight on the Wednesday, heavy thundery showers are spreading up from the south. So could be some very heavy thundery rain overnight through early hours of Wednesday. So as I said, when we're having a look at these charts, there can be a 6 to 12 hour sort of um, deviation, just depending on how quickly that low pressure runs in. And of course, the UK Met Office run here is more delayed than the GFS and the GM. So just wanted to show you this, although we can't have a look at it exactly, just shows you there is some uncertainty. So yes, it does look like Tuesday afternoon this evening has the potential to be thundery, but you can see by this run that it could be delayed. There is the possibility some models are having it a lot more delayed than others. But of course that is expected at this lead time and we'll just have to see exactly how it does play out. Now if we do finish the run, uh, or finish the video, sorry, by just having a look at what the ensembles are showing through um, the 19th and 20th of July, the breakdown of this on, uh, of this uh, of this heat wave, so you can see through Tuesday morning, a couple of ensemble members have some heavy showers and precipitation for London, more unlikely. But the majority have it coming around early to mid afternoon to through the evening, the early hours of Wednesday. Others have it coming through Wednesday as well. 
but you can see there is a lot of uncertainty with it. There's a massive spread there of over 24 hours between precipitation spikes. So it just shows you a lot of the ensemble members are forecasting rain. Again, because it's convective in nature and we're at quite a far, far away lead time, we're not going to see any massive precipitation spikes this way, at this stage because, of course, low resolution ensembles are not going to pick up on convection, which the thundery weather would be uh, of nature. They're not going to pick up on it that well in this sort of lead time. So we're not expecting any massive precipitation spikes but it's more the fact that we are seeing precipitation spikes and it's their time frame. And you can see there is about a 24 hour spread from the earliest ensemble members to the latest ensemble members, maybe 24 to 36 hours spread. So we'll just have to see exactly how it does play out, but the majority are through Tuesday evening to the early hours of Wednesday. That's what we're seeing at the moment for this precipitation. And of course, beyond that, as we go into slightly more unsettled weather, we haven't got high pressure sat over the top of us, there's always the risk of more precipitation beyond that and if i do combine it with the andrew 50 hp temperature and precipitation you can see how it coincides with the drop in upper air temperatures quite a drastic drop depending on the on each model you can see the operational run dropping very quickly others a bit more less dramatic the ones that are less dramatic most likely will be less thundery uh, as that temperature um contrast is lower whereas the ones that go suddenly drop dropping more likely to be heavy and thundery just because higher temperature contrast, more energy, uh, um, more severe weather fronts moving through uh, as we see a big contrast in the air masses. So we'll just have to see how this does play out. I did want to have a look at this just because I don't want to sort of spring a video up on Monday and Tuesday saying severe thunderstorms coming and I haven't looked at it at all and I know a lot of people are conscious um, about the ending of this heat wave. When is it going to end? How is it going to end? Uh, I know the majority of people do enjoy heat but this sort of heat that we're going to be seeing through Sunday to Tuesday it is too much for the majority of people and i think a lot of people are looking forward to the end of it so it does look likely it is going to end quite abruptly through tuesday into wednesday for many the south could still hang on to some warmer weather through wednesday into friday maybe mid to high 20s but the majority are back towards the mid to low 20s back closer towards average i still think it will be slightly above average you can see by the ensemble charts here the upper air temperatures in london are still slightly above average so that's why still 25 26 27 degrees is possible and i think slightly above average widely but it's nowhere near as oppressive as we have uh, over the next sort of three to five days um and hopefully we do see some precipitation as well because i know a lot of people's gardens are suffering a lot of green air is starting to turn more brown as we have had a lack of rainfall so hopefully some of these thundery thunderstorms and if it does not thunderstorms it's more general precipitation hopefully it does give a widespread sprinkling overnight through tuesday into wednesday uh, and we see uh, hopefully a cool down in temperatures uh, helping out all the green spaces um, as well so anyway thanks for watching make sure you do stay safe out in this heat wave because that is the main risk at the moment yes we could see some thunderstorms but i do think this heat is going to cause more more issues than any of these potential thunderstorms through tuesday into wednesday or any of the precipitation well at all so please do stay safe out there um it is going to be oppressively hot it's going to be dangerous please do keep an eye on the warnings and of course if you are more interested in what's happening with the heat waves check out the videos for the last couple of days or the video coming out uh, tomorrow. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.